When I'm hiring backend developers, one of my favorite things to ask candidates is how they would design a REST API. Look, if you write bad code that's internal to your application, you can fix it pretty easily. But if you design an API that other people use and later you wanna change it, it's a nightmare to fix because there are clients depending on that bad API design. So what are some good design patterns for your API endpoints? Well, typically we model the world with resources. For example, say you're building a RESTful API for YouTube. You might have resources like users, videos, and comments. And for each resource, then provide CRUD endpoints, create, read, update, and delete endpoints. Let's take the videos resource for a second. For a get all videos endpoint, we might use the get HTTP method and the slash videos path. But what if we want the client to be able to get a single video by ID? Again, we'd use a get request probably, but this time we append a dynamic ID to the end of the path. For example, to get the video with ID seven, we might just use slash videos slash seven. And to get the video with ID 69, we'd use slash videos slash 69. One mistake that I've seen here is dropping the S from videos when creating the endpoint for a single video. For example, using slash video slash 420 instead of slash videos slash 420. Uh, don't do that. It's so much easier to just keep the resource name consistent and always use the plural version. Now, say we want to create a new video. We'll use the post HTTP method most likely, and importantly, the same slash videos path but it's a single video that's being created. So should we provide an ID in the path? No. And that's because the server should be responsible for creating the ID. As the client, we just send the video data and expect the server to send back the new ID in its response. And to update a resource, of course, we usually use the put HTTP method, but this time we include an ID because the server needs to know which resource we're gonna update with the data that we sent it. And finally, for the delete endpoint, it's important to understand that it's rare to delete batches of a resource at the same time. So delete slash videos often doesn't make sense, of course, with some exceptions. But a delete endpoint is almost always going to end with a dynamic ID so that you can delete one specific video. And then of course, one last thing, these naming conventions that I'm telling you about, they, they really only apply to the end of the URL path. It's common for the beginning of the path to change. For example, to namespace our API by version, we might use slash v1 slash videos. Then in the future, we could update functionality and expose it under slash v2 slash videos. So while the start of the path varies widely from API to API, standard conventions for the resource path at the end of the URL are pretty consistent. And of course, just remember, these are conventions at the end of the day. You can do whatever you want.